Alright guys, so we're back. The, the plan remains the same. Hopefully, <laughs> the results though, hopefully those are better. Alright. We got, uh, what's her name? Tira? Pretty sure that's her name. A little picture showing up here. This one was a lower level, let's deal with this first. Alyssa Letty explained that the beacon had to be kept lit for a week in order to make contact with a hidden village clan on the eighth day. On the eighth day, what? We move deeper and deeper into the trees, feeling eyes on us all the while. At last, the trees broke into a wide clearing. At its center was a great stone carved with decorative symbols. Oh, here we are. That's the ancient altar I've been looking for. I'll put this on top and... This letter poured an odd powder onto the altar and set alight, sending a foul-smelling, purplish smoke into the air. <coughs> According to the marvelous old text passed down through the Crone family, this beacon will summon the Hidden Village Clan after seven days has passed. We need to keep the fire going until they show up, so we'll have to take time tending it. Alright. Well, it's been seven days, let's keep the fire... How long do you intend to linger here? Eek! There was a young man standing behind this letter. It was likely his gaze we felt all this time. His clothing was not at all similar to that of the villages nearby. Um, where did you come from? Are you lost by any chance? I am a mid warrior of the hidden village. Why are you trespassing in our forest? Ah, you're from the hidden village? Of course, of course, uh, seriously? <laughs> Judging someone on appearance alone, are you? I can see why the elders hate outsiders so much. You summon your senior and you dare to doubt me. As I was wondering who this senior was, Lissaletta spoke again. <laughs> now that I think about it, the text did mention that the people of the Hidden Village Clan had extremely long lifespans, so uh, forgive me, Sir Omid. I do not deny to speak with pitiful fools. If you will not leave on your own, then I will drive you away by force. Buddy, buddy, she's a little girl, man. You, okay, she's probably not that little. <laughs> but come on, man, is, is it, it's a young lady. Come on, why you gotta be so mean? She's obviously, what's the word? Hyper, fanciful, something like that. <laughs> Now you're done. You don't do this. They said you were a man. Oh no! You sounded real girly. <laughs> I like how right before I won, she was like, "Relax." <laughs> you would, you attacked me. Remember that. Oh no! You got me! You're so strong! <laughs> I looked on, perplexed by Omid's obviously feigned defeat, he whispered to us. Play along, the elders are watching. Ha! <laughs> um, we come to you in peace. We only wish permission to pass through this forest to maintain trade with other villagers. We promise not to disturb you, so please permit us! After Lucilla had delivered his speech to the forest, Omid spoke again. Listen, everyone, they are strong and they follow the laws for a full week. Don't they deserve this, at least? Amid's voice was swallowed by the silence among the trees. Before too long, an arrow shot out from the shadows and landed at Lissaletta's feet. Yeek! Oh, there's a note attached. Let's see. Provide one sack of sugar on each new moon as trip, and those who have been granted permission may pass. Outsiders may not speak to the people of the Hidden Village clan. Very well! It's a deal! The road was on its way to being built. Life in the village would soon improve. That's good. Look at that. Improving a whole your thing village life. Surges in your body. And that was easy. Boy, boy just let me win. Fendorf. Interesting. A little bird a long time ago. I ran into a young girl named Tira, the Tira while walking along an old forest path. She spoke in a strange manner and told me she was being followed. Oh, that's not good. There we go. <laughs> Don't 
Don't worry about it. As I walked an old path through the forest, I came across a large metal ring hanging from a tree branch. Intrigued, I moved in closer, and from above I heard a gleeful voice. Hiya! Looking up, I spotted a slender young woman peering down at me from a perch atop a branch. Hmm, never seen you before. You don't look like you're following us. I asked if she was alone up there, but she ignored me and continued her monologue. You know, I was just starting to get a little restless. She nimbly jumped down from the tree. The name's Tia, and I'm so famished I could die. Have any snacks for me? Tia held both her hands out. I took some bread from my pack and handed it to her. Thanks, you're the best. I've just got one more favor to ask, okay? Tia looked at me, her eyes brimming with anticipation. Yeah, listen, why not? As soon as I answered, a group of men appeared. These guys were good. I hadn't noticed them until they were nearly upon me. We've been looking for you, Miss Sindrasel. The man who spoke appeared to be the leader. He seized the young lady and took her metal ring from the tree. No, stop it! He turned to leave, still holding to your captive, and called back to his associates. No witnesses. Excuse you very much. <laughs> I, I ain't having it. You can't kidnap little girls in front of me. And you can't try to kill me. I, I'm strongly against those two things. One maybe a little bit more than the other. Maybe. But still don't like either of them. Oh. And you use poisonous weapons. Dishonored pieces of garbage. Alright. It's time for me to actually you know, do something, maybe? Maybe? Ready? There we go. Well, I tell you, time for me to do something. <laughs> Had to almost die before it happened. My goodness. Some, some would say I was dead. Trash, mate. You got nothing on me. Literally, like, you didn't hit me. You, <laughs> you know, the poison on your weapons, they don't tend to work if you can't hit the target. I'm just saying. With my attackers defeated, I looked around for the man who had taken Tia captive. He and his prisoner were nowhere to be seen. Oh, fuck no. As I searched the area, I noticed what appeared to be a trail of breadcrumbs? Yeah. I just gave her bread, remember that? Get that big memory going down, yeah. She better not be in Japan. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Met a flick of moonlight broke through the tangle of branches overhead as I made my way through the dark forest following Tears' trail of breadcrumbs. Eventually, I reached a clearing where I found the ruins of a castle. I followed the trail through the trees deeper and deeper into the forest. What's this tear is doing? Before long, an old, half-collapsed castle came into view. The trail of breadcrumbs led right to it. I crept towards the castle, scanning the area for danger. I spotted several sentries, all of them dressed like the man who had taken Tira. From what I could see, the sentries demanded a password into the castle from such an old place that was guarded extremely heavily. Maybe if I got closer, I could overhear the password, even try reading someone's lips. It was worth a shot. Suddenly, a piercing scream came from inside the castle. Too focused on discovering the password, I stumbled in surprise and stepped down hard on a dry branch. A loud snap cracked in the air, and one of the sentries got sight of me. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? Um. Uh, well, you see, I was, uh. I was standing here. He's <laughs> dropping. And spying on you because you kidnapped a small, a small child. And that's unacceptable behavior. And now, since you since you are approaching me, I'm gonna have to uh, teach you your lesson the hard way instead of going in peacefully and resolving this with 
minimal conflict. That's okay, though. I'm alright with ending this in a very violent manner. Oh, jeez. Got no problem with it, mate. I'm not happy with you right now. You are hitting me a lot more than you should be. Oh, that's not good. Oh. Ha. Huh. Here we go. Your anger can never match my anger. I glow when I wait, so was he. Um, I mean Just get over it, mate. My anger is better than your anger. I'm like the Hulk. You're like puny puny god. <laughs> oh. Bad references. Luckily, I hadn't drawn the attention of anyone else. But, um, I wonder how I did that. After I subdued the sentry, I demanded he tell me everything he knew. They don't tell me nothing. I'm just one of the bird of passages hired lackeys. What brings you here? Revenge? Did they kill your family or something? Or are you being offered a pretty penny to take them down? It doesn't matter, I guess. This is just one hideout of many. Whoever you're after probably ain't even here. <laughs> So the castle was a hideout for this group of assassins, the Bird of Passage. Which means that scream I heard. Yeah. Knocked that boy out. I knocked the sentry unconscious, tied him up, and rolled him into a thicket. I had to sneak into the castle without being seen. Immediately, screaming is bad. Right, even the assassins. I don't want to think about what they're up to in there. castle was one of the birds of passages layers, but only silence filled the gloomy halls. Something was not right. Fresh bloodstains, corpses were scattered throughout the castle. All had been disfigured in the same way. Their eyes were gouged out and drained shimbles were curved into the flesh. The gruesome sight and loathsome stench made me crawl the scream. Was Tyr okay? I climbed a staircase, proceeding further into the castle until I eventually reached a large hall. I could hear someone moaning nearby. And so the sound soon became clear. Tied to a chair and covered in blood was the man who had taken Tira. He was likely the leader of this bird of passage base. He was on the verge of death, like the cadaveres decorating this castle's halls. His eyes had been gouged out, his head thrashed wildly, and he wailed in agony. There's someone there! I remained silent, but the man continued. He must have thought I was one of his own. Listen, report to the Archaeotibrix. Essain Dossel, she. Essain Dossel. That name sounded familiar. Ever since, since she used the evil seed to escape, yeah, she's been hiding in Eastern Europe. Though she changed her name, the Fane's normality. The same blood boils inside her. The man began to speak feverishly, as though consumed by fear. <laughs> the blood of a butcher of human flesh. She tore her false family to pieces. She's come back, too. She must be caged again. No, her false name. It's T. Before he could finish, a giant metal hoop dropped from above and cleaved him in two. His corpse slid to the floor, the blood-soaked disc protruding from the ground next to it. I'd seen that weapon before. You took ages! I've been waiting for you! Tyr slid out of the darkness to claim a weapon. Unaffected by the sight of the corpse, she looked at me and tilted her head. Remember how I said I had another favor to ask you? Wanna hear it? Yeah, uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Okay, <laughs> listen up. I'm gonna dye you red. Here. You can't be doing that. I didn't do nothing wrong. 
was gonna help you and everything. And now you're trying to cut me open. What type of thank you is that? I gave you bread. Battle and I came to one. save you. Fight. Why are you so rude? Ready? I should have warned you before you attacked me. I'm a, uh, I'm not a, can oh, I, I wasn't at the round table, you know. Uh, I, I think I said I was a Templar at one time. I went into an astral chaos and survived. I kind of walked back out. I've absorbed multiple power sources of astral fissures. I'm undead. Pretty much, I'm one of the most dangerous so caliber. Ready? Mainly because, you know, I've been the hell out of most of them. Just saying. I should have probably told you that before I let you attack me. But don't worry. Don't worry, Chip. We'll, we'll work something out. It's okay. Uh, I tend to be uh, a good influence, I, I, I think. <laughs> Looking at me as though nothing had happened to you, spun a ring and launched another attack. I'm not done playing with you yet! Yeah, <laughs> show me the color of your blood. I just barely paired a blade in time. Its movements were difficult to predict, as though it was being controlled by more than just one person. What part do you want me to gouge out of you first? Gotta be your eyes, right? Eh, who cares? I'll chop you into tiny pieces. Tia spoke as though she had two personalities fighting for control of her mind. Was she possessed or was she just mad? Whatever the case, if I didn't do something quickly, I was in danger of being overwhelmed. I, it off, I held off her onslaught while slowly backing into a room. Here, one weathered wall was partially collapsed. What's up, little mousy? Nowhere else to run in time for the kitty to pounce on her prey. Tia flew towards me with her blade. Somehow I deflected her attack. You're really starting to annoy me. She broke the wall, fell right into my trap code. The wall in which Tyr had embedded her being crumbled and failed, dragged along by the force of her momentum, she went down too. Terrified that she might still be alive, I approached the gap and peered down. Neither Tyr nor her weapon were anywhere to be seen. All I could make out was a single black feather falling gently down onto the debris. Um. Your soul surges in your body. Did I just? I don't think she's happy with me. You know what? <laughs> I really don't think she's gonna be happy with me next time I see her. Cause I bet you she ain't dead. Oh boy. Tommy. Oh. Do we? Do we go to Thomas or do we go to the deep ravine? That is the question. You know what? You always gotta help your boy Thomas out. Stands in your way. Apparently, um, you gotta get attacked before you can help your boy Thomas out. My goodness. I have so many friends. Like Thomas, that one dude, that, that Zihani dude, the lady Samakan. In, in her dead. Man, everybody loves him. Such a nice dude, I suppose. I mean, I'm running around murdering the hell out of people. So I don't know if I'm really that nice. But, you know. I at least got kind of nice. Maybe, maybe I'm just nice to some people. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm tier 2.0. I just don't even know. Oh boy. That'd be bad. That'd be a, a very bad. Especially since Zasa Mel said I was the only one who could stop Bazel. Well, imagine it. I have split personalities. And one of me is a complete.
complete dick and the other one's real nice. Oh boy. That'd be interesting. Ooh, super powerful weapon. I like it. Deep dark amber. What is that? Can I make a weapon? Make myself new armor? So it stops breaking all the damn time? Is that is that something I could do? Into yep, always. With the boy Thomas. A slick food. A deep dark amber does not sound like a food, but let's 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 look. See if it's here. No, it is not. I gotta find out what I can do with that. This is 25. This is 30, 257. That's a lot more. Set bonus. Do I, can I put anything in it? No. This one already has both for soul gouge and more soul gouge. Alright. We are soul gouge. <laughs> As I made my way south from the hub of maritime trade that was Amsterdam, I heard that sounded like an altercation in the distance. I drew closer to find a young man I recognized well, exchanging a few choice words with a wool dealer. I'll have you know, this is the finest wool around. Do you mean to tell me you can't even pay half of what we agreed on? Why? Silence, you swindler. I know how cheap this stuff is. I've got tons of it sitting in my warehouses. I had heard that textile manufacturers were abandoning the country in droves to escape the fighting. It's possible that this dealer's customers had all fled and he was trying to be, 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 I don't know that word, mage on his contract with Thomas. What the hell is that word, mage? I, I don't like that one. Just give me the goods and get the hell out of here if you want to live to see tomorrow. <gasps> oh, don't you dare tell me he just hit. The dealer knocked Thomas down and drew his weapon. I should probably save him. But I'm gonna do more than save my boy Thomas. How how dare you lay your hands on Thomas? Who do you think you are? Thomas is a personal friend of mine, okay? And I will not I will not accept this type of treatment towards him. You my mate? You about to get special treatment. What? And I don't care what's affected, I'll beat the hell out of you till the goddamn day you die. Oh, how- Oh, boy, you think you're Killer 2.0? You better calm the hell down. I know the best staff fighter in the world, I'm gonna beat the living hell out of him. Out of here! Oh, 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 you gonna. Mm, boy. You're not good at me. I really don't know why everyone keeps thinking they can fight me. Like honestly, they're running around like normal clothes, you know, like normal people. <laughs> My dumbass runs around in full plate armor everywhere. Like honestly, <laughs> my unconventional negotiation tactics helped me convince the large man to purchase Thomas's cargo, though the price still lower than that originally agreed upon. Phew. <laughs> You really helped me out of a bind there, friend. I traveled all this way with that cargo and was about to be cheated. You know, I came here to raise funds for my new business venture, but it looks like I ended up losing loads of money instead. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's right. I have something for you, let's see. Here it is. He took out a bundle from his bag and handed it to me. 
Please accept this as a token of my gratitude for all the investments you've made in me. I wouldn't be here where I am now if it weren't for you. Well, now that that's out of the way, I've got a favor of a lifetime to ask for you. See, I want to keep undertaking new ventures. Now that I know all the known world has to offer, everywhere I go just bores me. So I'm going to sail the oceans, discovering new sea routes and finding things no one has even dreamed existed. But doing that comes with a hefty cost. Even England's famed explorers were funded by the crown. But you know, if I had just enough money to get things started. So Red, care to give me one final push in the right direction? Thomas, my friend. You damn well know I want to give you more money. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Thank you, friend. I promise this will only lead to good things. You damn well know I want to give you money, Tom. I always want to give you money. My, you're my man. You're my broski. <laughs> uh, we'll see Thomas again. We will see Thomas again one day. But for now, it's about the end of the video, so I'll see y'all next time.